When it comes to preparations for hurricanes, Florida Power and Light leads the way. The uh, company starts well before the beginning of the season. Joining us now with additional insight is Jack Ebel, spokesperson for Florida Power and Light. Thanks for joining us, Jack. Uh, when folks lose power, that's when everything starts to go bad. And so now a big part of that is getting everyone back online as quickly as possible. Tell us a little bit about the new technology this year that you have for the upcoming hurricane season. So we're preparing year round for hurricane season. We're training our team. We're investing in, in smart devices throughout the electric grid. So for one of those examples of hardening our electric grid is using smart grid technology. So smart grid technology helps us in a number of ways. It allows us to be proactive, to spot an issue before it happens. It allows us to reroute power to help our customers avoid outages altogether during severe weather and hurricanes, and it helps us restore power faster following storms. And at the same time, we're continually hardening our electric grid. So what that may look like is, is we're continuing to strengthen and reinforce main power lines. These are the power lines that serve critical community infrastructure, such as hospitals, 911 call centers, police and fire stations, and we're also taking a strategic approach of putting neighborhood power lines underground. So it's called our Storm Secure Underground Program. And what that does is it takes a data-driven approach and finds those neighborhoods that are highly susceptible to power outages uh, during severe weather and hurricanes, whether it be uh, vegetation, trees, limbs, or other factors. So then we work with those neighbors and those communities and we put those lines underground. That helps our grid be more efficient and helps us be more resilient in the face of severe weather. Yeah, good points there, Jack. Now, when it comes to those uh, power outages, you know, people in general have to worry about, you know, when is their power going to get back uh, put online? And there's always people that go, well, you know, I saw an FPL truck come by and my power is still off. What is the process of getting power back on to folks after a major hurricane, say? We have a tried and true method of restoring power to the largest amount of customers in the shortest amount of time. So what that looks like is uh, when we ensure that our power generation facilities are able to uh, generate electricity and then we can transmit, translate, transmit that energy throughout the state, um, then we're starting with the critical community infrastructure. We're starting with those hospitals, 911 call centers, police and fire stations. From there, we're going to those community essentials, think grocery stores and gas stations. And keep in mind, while all these community and critical infrastructures are coming online, so are customers as well. And then from there, we're getting into those, we're dialing in on those hard hit communities, those areas, those neighborhoods where we have to get crews maybe into the backyard of the home. And our customers keep in mind that uh, it's important to know that even if you do not see a truck, we are still working safely and as quickly as possible. The issue that may be affecting your neighborhood or your community may be a couple miles down the road. Um, so following a storm, as soon as it's safe to do so, our crews are out there uh, around the clock 24 seven until every last customer gets their power back on. You guys have had a lot of experience lately. We had Irma, we had Ian, Adalia. What are some of the uh, last, uh, uh, actually lessons learned from these past storms we've had over the uh, last several years? One of the things that we've learned, particularly in the last couple of storm seasons, um, is that smart grid technology is really helping us and our customers um, following severe weather like hurricanes. So following uh, three of the more recent storms, Ian, uh, Dahlia, and, and Nicole, um, we were able to avoid more than half a million outages altogether. Those are outages that our customers would have otherwise experienced, um, and now smart grid technology allows us to help avoid those. Um, what we also know is that no electric grid is stormproof, um, and that's why we really want our customers to start thinking about their emergency preparations and getting their plans in place. Jack, what are some of the things that folks who are watching this right now should be doing at home to prepare uh, for this upcoming hurricane season when it comes to power? So first and foremost, if, whether you are a veteran of hurricane season in Florida or if this is your first hurricane season um, coming up, it's important to get that family emergency plan in place. So, so what does that look like? So what that looks like is you could have um, your, if you have a loved one who has medically dependent equipment that requires electricity, what is your plan for that individual? Um, stock up on those things that would be essential if you were to lose power, like batteries, flashlights, things of that nature. Um, at the same time, if you are planning to use a generator this year, now is the time to really get that understanding, that inside and out 
um, safety understanding of how to use that equipment um, should you need to use it this hurricane season. And we have on our website, fpl.com slash storm, we have a number of helpful resources and tips to help all of our customers and any Floridian really to, to prepare their home or business um, before and during hurricane season. Jack, speaking of that and generators, I know there's been a lot of talk over the years. I give a lot of hurricane seminars and uh, people always ask the question, you know, should I turn my power off at the breaker box if I'm going to evacuate my home? Also, if you have a big generator, should you hook it up directly to that power box as far as that goes, the fuse box? So it really boils down to a safety issue. We would encourage um, our customers if they're planning to use a generator to plug their equipment directly into the generator. Uh, don't plug it in directly into that circuit breaker because it can cause an issue called backfeeding. It can backfeed the electric grid. And that becomes a real safety issue for our crew, the men and women who are out restoring power because that energy can backfeed into the grid and become a very serious safety issue for our crews. Yeah, so Jack, what about the, the breaker box? Should we turn that off if we're getting ready to evacuate? I mean, is that a safe thing to do? I know, uh, you know some folks have, have done that in the past. So we would encourage all of our customers to take a look at that emergency plan. And, and in the event of a storm, it, it's following the local media, it's following their local emergency management officials. It's getting that understanding and making that a personal decision for them and their family whether or not to evacuate. Um, and so we would encourage our customers to start thinking about that plan now and, and get that understanding before um, hurricane season and there is a storm on our doorstep. Jack, you know, I, I, after uh, Ian a few years ago, a couple years ago, I was in my neighborhood just the day afterward and I saw a home. It was burnt to the ground and there was a rather high powered line was just lying there and the home was still smoldering. The fire trucks were coming by and they're looking at that home and they're going, well, there's no one in it, so we're just going to move on. They were doing some assessment work, obviously, to open up the streets and so on and so forth. But I could tell it was a high powered line. It may have caused that fire to cause that home to burn up. But uh, Again, what's your advice for folks after a hurricane? I mean, there's going to be some down power lines. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of puddles as well. I know the obvious advice is, you know, don't go outside, don't venture out. But tell us a little bit why that is the case. So really following a storm, we want our customers to keep safety first and foremost top of mind. So if you see a down power line or electrical equipment, call 911. Um, if you at any point you or a loved one feel like you are in danger or in a dangerous situation, we would again encourage you to call 911. Um, one thing that we would always encourage our customers following the storm is once a storm passes, that that's not the time to walk around your neighborhood. It's not the time to venture out, sight see some of the damage. Um, that's uh, for a number of reasons, and that's because we want our customers to stay safe. Um, we want our customers to stay out of any standing water. Um, at the same time, if you're out and about in your community driving around, um, that's more vehicles and, and more people on the roads. So while our crews are trying to go from one spot to the other safely and as quickly as possible, the clearer those roads are following the storm, it allows us to be more efficient. So we really just want our customers to be safe following a storm, really bunker down and, and keep the advice and, and heed the local um, emergency management, follow your local media, get that understanding and stay safe following the storm. Jack, thank you for your insight. Jack Edel with the Florida Power and Light spokesperson, and hopefully it'll be a safe and uh, uneventful season. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.